Well, not a lot of squats. <coughs> Surely if I'm up over 800 pounds or in the heavy powerlifting training, I'll stop at the top with a lot of lighter weights. Just walk it down like this. I'm going to put more weight on. Put a plate.
I don't want to turn the good looking fiber up thing off the floor. I do it stuff once a week. As of late, the events that we're pulling were going right below the knees at about 18 inches. So that's what we're working on. Just recently, I want to bring Jamie in just about every workout and hear what he does. So uh, he's pulling 850 from right around the knee for five, so that's what I did my last workout. And pulled 750 from 18 inches for five. So, that's the kind of strength level we're at. In the competition, when we're lifting the, the deadlift, we probably will get right up to 900. The guys will be dropping fast there. The winning weight will probably be around 950 or something like that. <coughs>
better to show you than to talk through it. One of the most inefficient ways of bench pressing would be straight down, straight up. What we do is tuck the elbows, come down really low, put the weight on the deltoids, the forearm. As we push, flare the elbows, the weight comes back up over the eyes. Pretend you were at a, at a warehouse on a loading dock. Rather than lifting the weight straight up, slide it up a ramp to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Bring it down low, push it back high. Sort of trick the weight, you lever the weight. You're doing this, you get really strong pectorals and deltoids, but you're not going to be doing a really efficient and heavy bench press. So it's down low. Okay, another simple trick here now, if you want to get really strong in each of the different phases of bench press, especially off the chest, move the grip in about one finger. You emphasize keeping your elbows in really close, you just pop right here. It works lower back and inner tricep, and you get real strong in that position. Here's your regular grip. Arms are at 90 degrees at the bottom. Now you go one finger wider. If you're having a hard, hard time, you push the bar up and you get right here and you're just stuck. Well, that's because there's a deficiency at the upper part of the pectoral. So you go one finger wider again. Now you bring the bar down real high. You stretch that hole at the top of the chest and you work just that, the upper chest. Bar <coughs> high in the chest, wide grip. Put all those three together. Real simple. Bar comes down low. You got great explosion off your chest, you got real good mid range strength, and you've worked hard high in the chest, so you lock it up. What you do is, any exercise might be a little advanced if you're not really into this, but this is how we've done it. We take the bench press as if it was a picture, and now the picture's been made into a puzzle of a thousand different pieces. There isn't a thousand pieces, but there's about four or five different ones in the chest that it's utilized along with the tricep, even some of the latissimus that are involved in the bench press, you take each one of those pieces of the puzzle and you analyze them and try to figure out which one's your weakest, which one's your strongest. You take that weak one and you build it up. When they're all working together, it's a nice unit that works together. You take some of those pieces out, you work on them, put it back in the puzzle, you try them again, you change your form, you change your grip, you get it in all different angles. If you want a bench press more, you do more bench presses. But if you don't really get into it, and you only do two or three sets of 10 at the same weight every week, that's all you're ever gonna do really get to the point where you want to do it, do more. Just you just do more and try to figure it out as you're doing it. Do you do any uh, real close grip? No. Uh, the best press when we're in the regular grip, close grip to me is one finger. It's not thumb to thumb. Yeah. Or anywhere near there. Yeah. So what we're always trying to think is that incline bench presses aren't going to help the bench press. And a wide grip is not collar to collar. So what we're working with is something that's real close to your regular grip. Uh, but I know what you're saying for triceps, you might try prone uh, straight bar tricep presses or narrow grip bench presses. But we found a few other exercises that work a lot better. Dave, do you have a decline bench? No, I mean, don't get it. Do you have a decline bench? Okay. You can see what's happening. Like, if you're trying to build one of the pieces of the puzzle with the tricep, rather than going narrow grip, you're still using a lot of chest and a lot of delta. You can't get away from it. But now, if you go decline, body's decline, you're pushing like this. See so what happens now. The triceps maximally stretched, flexed, there's constant tension on the triceps. You can go really heavy. On a tricep press line, you can't go very heavy because you're limited by your trunk strength. And the cable's always cutting into you and stuff like that. So we get on a decline and, and maximally overload the triceps to get it really strong so that that's one of the big movers in the tricep, in the bench press is the tricep. Uh, another exercise we use is a bent bar, easy bar on the prone. Rather than doing a nose breaker, where by the time you get enough weight in your hand, you work your tricep. <laughs> Somebody broke your nose again. <laughs> by the time you get enough weight in your hand to actively work the tricep, you probably ruined your elbow. It just doesn't work. What we do is rotate that upper arm downward, lock it into the tight to the side of the body. We try to lock the pack in the deltoid. We don't bench press it. We just do a tricep press, about a three-quarter movement. It doesn't touch the chest, it doesn't lock out. The mid-range movement, but it gets a nice stretch and a nice flex. Myself, when I was doing the 300 kilos in the bench, I was taking 400 pounds and doing 15s in the tricep press. And that gave me a 23-inch arm and really good strength in pushing the bar all the way through. I had a fairly narrow grip. I see a lot of bench presses that are really wide. And they use a lot, primarily a lot of pectoral, obviously, in bench pressing. 
the narrower you are, the more tricep you're going to use. I try to use all the groups, starting at low with the low pec, <coughs> run through the middle pec, catch it with the upper pec, and front delta, and lock it up. It's just a flaring motion. With that easy bar press, it's the kind of thing that you have to get out and experiment with. And some of the, the good guys that come into the gym, a lot of guys come from all over the states, train at my gym. It takes like one one set, two sets, and they know exactly what they're doing. There are other guys that train at the gym every day that I tell a bunch of times, and they just can't pick it up. They want to use their chest, the deltoids all at the same time. It's really just a partial move. Uh, if you're going to learn it, you're going to be able to you pick it up rather rapidly. You don't get any elbow trouble from doing those, and No. Yeah, did you see how they try, that, when the tricep's working, that nose breaker or the press press, I can't even get back there, uh, you're going to get a lot of stress on the elbow. You bring about, that arm down. What about pulling the push down? Pulling push yeah. down. Tricep press down on the pulley is fantastic exercise for building the tricep for myself. Uh, as of late, I'm using 180, 200 pounds, and you're sort of, as you press down, the weight pulls you back up. You're limited by your trunk strength, unless somebody's holding you down. It's, it's a nice warm-up exercise or a finishing exercise, but it isn't all that hot for, um, for building real strength. We're real selective as to just what exercises we do. You, as you can see the way we approach it, it's very functional, the training that we do. Uh, exercise that a lot of people, bodybuilders, uh, use for shaping their tricep is the tricep kickback. Swing like that with a dumbbell, and, I don't know. <laughs> just kind of hang around and uh, do their set. <laughs> it doesn't really do anything, right? What we try to do is get as precise and exacting in each exercise as we can. Try to find exercises that do the most amount of good to the body in a short period of time. Do you have any stretching? Lately, yeah, I have patella tendonitis from not stretching my biceps, and. Uh, Dr. Simple answer equation to getting rid of it is to stretch the quadriceps. So I haven't been stretching those, but as far as stretching the shoulders or anything, I, any of the other groups, I really don't. In the bench press, when I was at my strongest, I would take three plates and it wouldn't come anywhere near my chest. Four plates would just start to touch the chest as I do 10 or 15 reps. Five plates would hit there real nice, and I'd be into eight or 10 reps for a warm up, and I'd go five and a half plates and then do my workout up around 550. Some of my best workouts are like 550 for 575, 575 for 35, 600 for 1 by my best in the gym with 630. Just say he was trying to build up for the competition, Bill. Yeah. So he was going to do powerlifting competition and he was going to do some benching. Would you do your small reps before the contest? <coughs> yeah. And then just do your All big on the on the net. And what I do a lot is I bring the bar down, I do pause reps. Narrow grip, I yeah. pause it, relax the muscles, not fire it off. It's, sending, it's the ability for the body to send that message to the, to the muscle group and recruit the fiber and get it all to contract at once. The motor pathways are developed. And the more practice you do, the better you're going to be at a stop bench press. This is what you do in the contest. I noticed your bulk started to up and load at each chest before you started. As you can see, this pectoral is ripped off. Uh, I never picked the bar out of the rack myself. I always had a triple lift off. And when I was bench pressing really heavy, I pretended I thought of having a hydraulic spring that I never felt the weight was at arm's length and that spring was being compressed and the hydraulic was easing it down and it was ready to go and then right up. That's how it all worked. But uh, that was the game I played in order to do as much as I did. I believe I still hold the world record of bench press in the IPF in Hawaii where they use plastic weights. <laughs> One guy uh, raised his foot off the bench, which was illegal. He moved his foot, which is illegal. He didn't stop on the chest, which was illegal. And he didn't lock it all the way up, but he did 700 pounds. And uh, Ted RC, they give him uh, APF for some other federation. Uh, as a matter of fact, the guys that wrote, that signed the paper, that gave him the world record, weren't even at the meet. <laughs> so I don't know how they knew that it was a good lift, but I guess they wanted it to be a good lift. Anyway, so I still have the record in the bench. And I'm the guy that's kind of taken the bench and sort of taken it apart like a puzzle and figured it out. But I'd be happy to talk about the other two lifts, but they're... So, so what about the bench, then? Is that a good bench, or, or do you prefer that we have other benches, which are uh, well, well, more grip than that? This one right? inclines, and it's wide enough so that you get a legal grip, and that's many people are going to go any wider than that unless they're, they're wide in the shoulders. Fine for bench, it's got a nice spotting rack.
a little bit of bridge lines. I don't really like to preach in here when I'm going heavy, but I don't go heavy anymore, so that really doesn't matter. Yeah, five minutes. No, 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 no. If you want to do that now, sure. No, you do it now. <laughs> well, I don't know if he's ever been a coach, but uh, I could use a coach like that. Did you know the abdominal train? As a matter of fact, yeah. He's a baby decline. Put a 50 kilo disc on my chest. Do a number of sets of reps with that. I like leg raises. I like a cable crunch. Hold it, crunch down. Uh, when I'm doing the leg raises on the bench, I twist from one hip. The other hip, then to the center, I can tie weights between my feet. Um, when I was doing wrestling in '86, I was, had to be rather vain and had ripples on my abdominal because I was before hundreds or thousands of people all the time. So uh, I did about a I did about a 40 set abdominal routine every day, other than my regular training, and uh, it worked really well. One thing I can tell you all about abdominals that's really interesting and, it, and it's kind of revolutionary. The fastest way to getting to really a big routine and great development in the abdominals is to stretch between sets before the workout and after the workout. If today, if you had never done a setup before and today you did two sets, the only way you're going to be able to do four sets tomorrow and 10 sets next week and 20 sets a month from now is if you stretch between sets when you start to cramp up or you stretch after the workout before the next workout. If you've ever done a big abdominal routine, you get up in the morning and can't even get out of bed. It locks up. Man, it's gotcha. But if you would have stretched after the workout, you'll never lock up. And you'll be able to increase the amount of work you do in abdominals. It's really kind of interesting. But I went out of it. Stretching <laughs> helps them a lot. For the abdominal. Real simple exercise. On your stomach. On your elbows. Looking up. <coughs> Twisting your torso a little bit. That's the abdominal stretch. 80s and 100s, huh? Yeah, it's just a lot more fun. If I stand here and hit this, my first rep, can I stop? How are we doing for time? Jamie's been to about five of these, and Chris has been to about 15. Uh, he says I get long winded sometimes. But stop me if I start failing. minutes, I think we're going to question and answer and all that sort of thing. Anything you can think of, like, what do you think about when you psych up to lift a weight? That's a good question. <laughs> There's about another 20 questions, but you haven't answered ask them yet. Stopped at 110 and then 120. 